O Canada Conversations are a creation of IOM, made available under the Creative Commons 3.0 IGO. Please refer to the text of the audiobook for the copyright mark and the full legal code. Funded by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. Financé par Immigration, Refugees et Citoyenneté Canada. O Canada Conversations, Dialogue Number 21. Education in Canada. The following dialogue is related to Unit 6, Education, from the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. For more information, refer to the following units of the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. 6.1. Education in Canada. 6.2. Education options for children. 6.3. Public education in Canada. 6.4. 6.4. Basic Education Levels in Canada. Explaining Grades Kindergarten to 12. 6.7. Family and Education. In this dialogue, Obasi has a meeting with a school counselor before enrolling his children to school in Canada. Obasi takes his 10 year old daughter Jasmine with him. The school counselor explains the school system and enrollment process to Obasi and Jasmine. Welcome. I am a counselor at this school. I help newcomer families understand how the education system works and help them adjust to school. How have your first few weeks been here in this community? It has been fun. I made a few friends in the neighborhood. Good so far, thank you. We're slowly settling into our new lives and looking forward to enrolling our children in school. My middle child here wanted to come with me today because she has questions. Great. How about I start by going over the basics and then I can answer any questions you may have. By law, children in Canada must study. Depending on the province or territory, they start studying between ages 4 and 6 and must continue until they are between ages 16 and 18. We are wondering what grades we should enroll our children in. My oldest child is 14. This one here with me is 10, and the youngest is a newborn. There are four levels of basic education in Canada. When children first enter school, they go into kindergarten, which is typically for children between ages 3 to 5 years old. Then for primary school, which is grades 1 to grade 5, children will attend between the ages of 6 until they are 10 years old. Children between the ages of 11 to 13 years old will attend middle school, which is grades 6 to grade 8. And lastly, secondary school or high school, which is grade 9 through 12, is for ages 14 to 18 years old. Did you catch which level you would be placed in for your age? Primary school? That is correct. Even if they cannot speak English or French, newcomer students are usually placed in the grade that corresponds to their age. Since you are 10 years old, you would be placed in grade 5. Yay! So, in that case, what grades will my oldest child be enrolled in? Your 14-year-old will be placed in high school, which is grade 9 to grade 12. At the end of grade 12, if your child passes their classes, they will receive a secondary school diploma. If they want to pursue an interest in a particular subject, they can apply to a college or university. I see. Our 14-year-old has some physical and learning challenges. Will this be a problem? Thanks for letting me know. There are additional supports available for students who have physical, behavioral or learning challenges, this help can be offered either at school or elsewhere. Here in most schools, there are professionals who can help. We can speak with the school, your government-funded organization, or your sponsors to see what other support options are available for your family in the community. All right, thank you. And what schooling options are available for our children? I learned from the Canadian Orientation Abroad session 
before coming to Canada that a public school like this one is probably the best option for us, but I would like to confirm it with you. Could they attend private school? How much would we have to pay? Of course. There are four education options for children. The first type of schools are public schools. We are sitting in a public school right now. This is the most common type of school in Canada. They are funded by the taxes people pay. Provinces and territories ensure that high-quality education is available at public schools. Teachers need to be certified to teach at these schools and follow a government curriculum. Public school is free. The second type are called separate schools. These are publicly funded schools that are only available in some provinces and territories. In these schools, the Roman Catholic religion is part of the curriculum. Separate school is also free. Do students need to be Catholic to attend this type of school? Each province and territory will have different rules for attendance in Catholic schools. Okay. The third type are private schools. These schools require families to pay for students to study there. Some of these schools follow rules set by the government, while others decide what their students learn and choose who teaches them. In these schools, religion may be part of the curriculum. Lastly, the fourth type is homeschooling. Some families choose to educate their children at home. Students still need to be registered to show that they are receiving an education. Families cover most of the costs and decide what their children learn. Regulations for homeschooling vary between provinces and territories. If you are interested in homeschooling or want more information about the other schooling options, I would recommend visiting the province's Ministry of Education website. Wow, that is a lot of choices. Which option would you recommend? Well, you have the right to choose. The public school system is the most common system in Canada because it is the most affordable option. If you and your partner are going to be attending your own language classes or working, then homeschooling may not be possible, and private schooling may be too expensive. There are two public schools in your area. It will also give your children opportunities to meet other kids and make friends in the community. Yes, I remember the Canadian Orientation Abroad session now. I believe that public school is the best option for us. When does the school year start and end? I want to go to school now. The school year begins at the end of August or early September and ends in June with breaks during the year. Even though you arrived in Canada after the school year has begun, you can still enroll your children in schools. I remember being very pleased when I learned that. What are the typical hours and days the children will attend school? Students go to school from Monday to Friday, except on public and school holidays. And they are at school usually for seven to eight hours per day. What about a lunch break to eat at home like I used to, Father? That is what we did back home. If the student lives very close to the school, then going home for lunch is possible. But here, most students do not go home for lunch. They eat lunch at school. You can pack them a lunch to bring to school, though. Okay. And what language will the schooling be in? We learned that Canada has two official languages, English and French. But our children do not speak these languages very well. That is okay. Even if the children cannot speak English or French, newcomer students are often placed in the grade that corresponds to their age. Extra help is available for them to learn the language. That is good to know. In terms of the language of instruction, there are French schools and English schools. In English schools, lessons are taught in English, and French is taught as a second language. In French schools, lessons are taught in French, and English is taught as a second language. There are also French immersion schools, which offer a mix of both. Since we are in an English-speaking province, does it mean that our children must go to an English public school? Not necessarily. 
There are some French and French immersion public schools, even in English-speaking provinces. The first thing to do is to research which schools are available where you live. In the city of Winnipeg, where we are right now, all three options are available. For your children, would you like to take a few days to think about it? Yes. I will speak with my family, and I will call you tomorrow with a decision. Sure. I have a friend who lives in Montreal, and he said children there go to school in French. Yes, Montreal is in the province of Quebec. Since French is the only official language in the province of Quebec, newcomer children who live there will go to schools where lessons are taught in French. I start a full-time job in a warehouse as an assembly line worker soon, and my wife attends full-time language classes on the weekdays. Neither one of us can get here to pick up our children when their school day is over. So, after the children's school day finishes in the afternoon, who will take care of the children until my partner gets home? I have a newborn baby along with a 10-year-old daughter and our 14-year-old son who needs special care. What should we do in terms of child care? First of all, children under the age of 12 cannot be left alone without supervision. Since your 14-year-old may need after-school support too, I can recommend a few options. The first would be to have a responsible family member look after them. Do you have any extended family here? I have my mother-in-law. All right. She may be able to help take care of the children. Here are some other child care options. For children under the age of four, your first choice is to enroll them in a licensed child care center or nursery school. Your second choice is to pay a responsible person to look after your children. The third choice is to look into after-school care options or after-school activities offered by their school. I see. And what are the typical costs for child care here in Canada? The cost of child care is different in each province and territory. Government-funded child care is available in some provinces and territories at a low cost. To check if this option is available for you, ask your government-funded organization or sponsors for more information. Okay. Thank you. And one last question. We want to be involved in our children's education. We want to make sure our children succeed so they can have a good life here. What are some things we can do to support them? That is a great question. I always encourage family members to support their children's learning by playing an active role in their education. For instance, you could help them with their homework. I also recommend you meet and speak with their teachers, and you can volunteer at their school as well. How would I volunteer? Sometimes there are activities, fundraisers, field trips, and other events organized by the school that parents can help out with. Interesting. Well, thank you very much. We will look into this after our children are enrolled and settled into their new schools. Great. I am happy to help. We will talk again soon. Feel free to contact me if you have any further questions. I will. Thank you. End of Dialogue Unit